The sun is slowly going to creep into my shot. That's going to be great. Perfect. Welcome. Welcome to a new live stream. Uh, please confirm that you are watching us. You are hearing to us. We are here again. Very, very lucky to be here again with our great friend, with our great friend, Ryan Dyer, who is, by the way, I don't know if you know that Ryan Dyer is, I'm sorry, Ryan. Ryan Dyer is a big fan of Fernando Alonso. Uh, as you can see, they are like they are like two drops of two drops of water. They are just the same. And please don't laugh, don't laugh because Ryan Dyer looks lo looks like more like Fernando Alonso than Fernando Alonso walks figure in the Madrid walks museum. And today Ryan uh, has also invited his friend Miles Morgan. They have a very special relationship between them. You are going to see today, but, but <laughs> not that kind of relation that some, some of you are, uh, are searching in Google. Miles Morgan is a, it's an incredible professional landscape photographer, uh, but also it's a professional airplane pilot and famous worldwide for his roles in hot shots, films like Airplane or Aterriza Como Puedas in Spanish. Top Gun <laughs> and the Spanish uh, film El Milagro de Petinto. So, so these are the our guests today. Thank you, thank you very much, Ryan and Marge, for joining the show today. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. So, so just to start with, uh, Ivan, you're pretty good looking. Jose is very sexy. Miles is just handsome as shit. So, I figured I'd do the entire episode like this just to look cooler does it work <laughs> it's not it doesn't help it does not help at all it, it doesn't help it doesn't help i think i look <laughs> cool as shit dude you you, look at you me. i we talked about not swearing and you made it you made it 17 seconds 17 seconds dude uh by the way Rule, I, I, rules for uh, thee the, not for me my version of hot shots was hot farts that was the that was the one that I put out. Yeah, I've <laughs> experienced that. Hey, have you guys noticed? But before we get started, you know, I just want to, Ivan, mean, if I may, just just make this clear. Ryan, you know, in, invites me onto this podcast, and I'm very excited because uh, you guys are amazing. And he tells me nothing about it, right? He's got this. He he thinks he's Joe Rogan over there. He's got a setup. He's got mics. He's got and he doesn't. T he's got his camera set up, and I'm sitting here with my with my webcam, the sun's streaming through, 
I, you know, he's made as usual it makes me look like an absolute idiot. <laughs> it's not hard. <laughs> And of course, Jose Garcia is with me again. Jose, thank you. Hello. Thank you, my friend. No, thank you for having me here. Um, okay, so today, uh, the interview is going to be totally different, different in format. Um, we thought about uh, introducing our guest, but we thought it would be better if we can hear Ryan introducing Miles and Miles introducing <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. So who, who wants to be first? I'll, I'll go. I'll go. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to keep trying to get out of the sun here. I'll just keep moving around. Miles is a guy that I let become my friend in 2009. Um, you know, he didn't have a lot of friends. Um, you know, he's kind of old. And so... I, I kind of felt bad for him. I was like, oh, right. I mean, I guess I'll give him my time, which is really, really valuable. And uh, yeah, and and then uh, you know, I taught him photography, and that's actually true. And he he fucked that, he screwed that up somehow. And uh, and yeah, but I I I love him. He he's he's like that that three legged puppy. That you, it's kind of like, Ew, but then it's also kind of like, oh, I, I love that little guy. <laughs> okay, okay that's it. That's that's all you got. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Great, great, great intro. Thanks. Um, man. So, so parts of that are true. I'll, I'll let me tell the, the the viewers because when I I did meet Ryan in two thousand and nine, and I will confess, he was a, a big shot landscape photographer. You know which means really nothing outside of our little landscape photographer community. And he took a lot of pictures uh, at, at Mount Hood, and I was intrigued because I lived in Portland. So I sent him a message on Flickr, of all things, and said, hey, you know, if you're ever going up, and where where would you suggest I go? And to his credit, he invited me to, to head up there. So I met him uh, up on Mount Hood. The, the door to his car opens, this cloud of smoke comes billowing out, and this five foot three, how many meters is that? It's like a meter. I think he's like a meter tall. If I'm converting. <laughs> and, and skinny, like literally half my size. Hair down to his bottom. Notice I didn't say ass. Um, and, and comes pouring out of the car. And then we snapped on our snowshoes, which I'd never used in my life. Uh, and off we went. And... I must say, we covered quite a bit of territory that first day. And I thought, you know, I feel sorry for this guy. He needs, he's like a lost puppy. And so I, I took him to uh, breakfast afterwards to say thank you. And I, and we had some bacon and then a big maple bar, like a big, you know, it's like a donut at Maple Leaf. Uh -huh. And introduced him to the maple bar. <laughs> and he had one. And then... Apparently, he was going to stay up there the night, bought another one. And I, and I find out the next day that uh, he has now thrown up those maple bars for the whole entire night. And so that's basically all you need to know about Ryan Dyer. He, he's, he was tiny, and then he got huge. Didn't get any taller, but he just got huge. And now it's kind of contracting a little bit. And he eats himself to vomit. I mean, really, I mean, he, he's an okay photographer, I guess. He's all right. <laughs> I'll I'll accept it. I mean that's that's all very true. <laughs> okay, we are curious because uh, Miles, you you posted this week um, uh, an history on Instagram. How how tall are you, Ryan? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Um, what? Which, which kind of questions are those, yeah, uh, Jose? Uh, that that's that's not in the in in our script. We, we I'm five ten. <laughs> I'm glad he not, asked. Because he's I'm not five ten. I'm five ten. I can show you on my on my driver's license. To your you. In your fact, European he he's not. I don't a, know how to. Hang on, I'm doing the conversion. Hold on, I gotta. Hang on. What do you guys use over there? Is it is it meters? Yeah. You, you, so, okay. Miles, hang on. Centimeters. Centimeters. Miles okay. says he's six four. He's six two on a good day in shoes. Oh. <laughs> I used to be five. I used to be six five. Okay, so he. Uh oh, 
He's 170. He says he's 178 centimeters. Uh -huh. I, I am not kidding you when I tell you he is 161 on a good Dude, day. Dude, I, I swear <laughs> to God, I'm 5'10". I will not have my name slandered like this. Will you come up to my armpit when we hug. I, I like I wrap you in my armpit. That's because I don't want to get like face to face with you because I'm scared you're gonna kiss me. I'm married. You prefer my armpit? Yeah, I mean, I mean it's everybody's better got than... their everybody's got their weird stuff. I suppose I don't, and I'm not judging. I'm just saying. I mean, the smells. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, <laughs> Almost that went off the rails. <laughs> Mystery is, is not solved yet, but we will find out um okay so we are gonna start with the with some question for both of you guys um first one you talk a little bit uh but uh how how did you meet each other um what's that incident that you that you you explained well let me expand that and then i'll turn it over to ryan but yep so so that is actually how we met we met up on mount hood uh to go shooting which which I should have brought a bucket because I'm going to vomit through this whole thing. But, uh, you know, Ryan, Ryan was and is a, a big league photographer who makes incredible images. And so I was really new to the, the whole thing and wanted to, to learn. And he was very gracious to allow me to come along. I literally got up there and I was at my heaviest at that point. I mean, I was not a light, a light man. And I had never used snowshoes. So we were going to snowshoe up the White River. And, and the conditions were sort of, were looking like they might be pretty good. And so he, I had to, I had no idea he had even put them on. So he helped me put on the snowshoes and I, I get them on and we start, you know, going up through the snow and he's, he's light as a feather. He's just kind of flying up and I just keep sinking. just post holing into the snow and I'm, and I'm stuck like a turtle on his back, just flailing. I just, I'm up to my armpits and just arms and he'd come and drag me out. And then we'd, you know, hike up a little bit further and boom, I'd go back in again and he'd come and drag me out, which I, which I thought was incredibly gracious because I will tell you, the light was starting to go. I mean, it was really starting to get good. And there I am just up to my belly button in snow. And then he finally dragged me out and then moved up and then he ended up and I have this, this view of our first day together of me up to my armpits, my camera completely sunk in the snow. And then I just see the top of Ryan's head with snow below it and then this incredible sunrise going off over the mountain and we're both just sitting there buried i don't know how we ever got out did you dig me out i think it was a mutual effort it was a mutual digging yeah. so we missed sunrise totally um it was it was glorious from where i was oh boy <laughs> how did they get that photo I don't it, know. It, uh, How am you I always not, in the back? In, in, I fact, I, the in fact, Honestly. I know a lot of people is searching is searching on Google about if you are dated. Yes. Yes. That is true. So yeah, if, if at least here in the States, if you type in our Ryan Dyer and Miles Morgan, it automatically fills to dating or a Ryan Dyer and Miles Morgan lovers. It's I, and I can tell you right now. Listen, I'm always behind. Why am I always in the back? See, every time. Yeah, you, you know, I kind of, I, I'd rather be in the back. You know what I mean? Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I don't. If, if, and listen, I, I just want to say this. I, I, you know, I, I am, I, I'm a, a heterosexual male. I have a wife and a child, and and if I were if I were homosexual, the last person I would date is Ryan Dyer. <laughs> the last. No, do you know who he would date? He would date Jason Bateman because he Absolutely thinks he looks in a heart because because he thinks he looks like Jason Bateman, and so no, he would want to hook up with somebody. Individual. You want to hook up with somebody who looks exactly like you, and that's creepy, dude. <laughs> that's scary. I, tell it's, me you don't have a man crush on Jay, Jason Bateman. Tell me. No, I don't. You, you're <laughs> such a liar. I don't. I have He's it a on video actor. somewhere. Yeah, I'm, you're a liar. Straight up. Okay, Justin Ryan Reynolds. Tim throw it out there. Ryan Reynolds. Justin Timberlake. That's okay, guys. Oh, come on. See, he's small. You like the small guys. 
Yeah. Now we are we are going to to begin with some questions uh, for the people in the chat, just to to inform. Uh, we are going to to make some questions later. We are going to tell, to talk about storms because both of them uh, share a passion about chasing storm adventure, adventures. So uh, we are going to start with these questions, and later we will be doing a game between both of them, a game the of questions to each other. First question for both of you, if you want. What do you like least about being a photographer? Is something that you really hate about being a photographer? Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm taking this one. You, you um, start. I don't like being in a photography community. I, I mean, there's just so much competition yeah. and, and ego that um, I see around. And that's my least favorite part of it. Because we're all just losers with, with cameras <laughs> doing a nerdy, nerdy hobby. I mean, being a photographer is not a cool thing. And, uh, and there goes all the viewership. Great job. W well done. <laughs> I'm going to cut you. <laughs> Go ahead, okay. Miles. It's, it's okay. Okay. Turn. First of all, let me just tell you, you're making me uncomfortable with you. You keep fondling your microphone. I don't know if you know you're doing it, but it's awkward for everybody. So just <laughs> put your hands down. People, people Thanks. has, uh, somebody has, has told in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like Julio Iglesias in Spain, in Spain when he was singing. He's talking, David, David Montero is talking about that. Ryan, why do you take the microphone so sexy way? <laughs> exactly, Steve, not just me. You know. Thank you to whoever said that, thank you. I, because, I deeply appreciate it. Because, you know, you've got to have some range. You know, I can, I can go like this, or I can go like this. You know what I mean? It's a whole. Or you can just leave it in the middle, thing. like everybody else. <laughs> you gotta have range, man. Okay. Uh, anyway, so what? Back to the question, and this is that really did not do this well. I'm just gonna blow myself out. How's this? Better? Great. I got straight. It's a striking light. Yeah. You got um, ten times more handsome when you did that. I did. Yeah. <laughs> it just washed me out to nothing. Um, okay, I'm going back. So. What I hate about landscape photography is being out in nature. Um, <laughs> and you know, Ryan's the same way. We'll go out there and we'll we'll hike around and, and we we read all these comments from people that are landscape photographers. That, you know, I didn't get any pictures today, but at, I was at least I was out in, in the beautiful nature and and enjoying the scenic world. And Ryan and I are just hiking blisters on our feet five miles in going i hate this why do we do this, this there's probably gonna be a bear i'm gonna you know i'm gonna sleep on the top of my car it's gonna be cold <laughs> i'm hungry i'm eating crappy food why are we doing this this is miserable and if i don't get a shot i am bitter bitter for the rest of the month i don't i, I don't i'm angry I, why did i i spent i wasted money and time and then we get home and literally every single time i'll call each other okay that was the best trip ever that was so much fun oh man we got to do that again so soon why don't we do that more often so <laughs> that's my answer yeah we're we're miserable when we're shooting together <laughs> we're terrible <laughs> well, i mean just ju i mean we're not even enjoying the time together so much and then it's afterwards you know a couple days later dude that was awesome got to do it again yeah and then we do yeah. it again and it's just agony Okay, so next question is, uh, what's the most challenging uh, challenging picture you ever took? Let, let's start now with Myers. Well, so I'm going to introduce you to uh, a gentleman named Bruce Amori, who is going to be uh, one of the um, leaders on our uh, storm chase tours. <clears throat> so Bruce is from Hawaii, the big island of Hawaii, and I met him uh, by taking a couple of volcano tours when Kilauea was erupting and was going into the ocean. I'm probably going to get arrested for this story now that I think about it. But um, so there was the ocean entry, which was really exciting to be part of. Um, and then there was the, the crater itself. And the crater itself is full of lava. And it's a big, giant lava lake that's probably 
I don't know, a kilometer across and constantly exploding. And there's, it'll explode up onto the side of the walls where we're standing. And then, I mean, not while you're there, but there was one shortly thereafter. And sometimes stuff collapses in and it's just, it's straight down into a pool of liquid rock. And the first time we ever, that he ever took me there, um, this is a long, long, long time ago, I think outside of the statute of limitations. Um, we walked up to the edge and Bruce stayed back a little bit and, and all around you can see there used to be a viewing area. It's totally destroyed by, you know, a volcanic explosion and he's getting his camera stuff and I walk up, we got a gas mask on, I walk up to the edge and you can hear it just these, it sounds like waves crashing, but it's, it's liquid rock crashing. And I, I get to the edge and I look down and I take three frames and I took my camera back and I went back to my backpack and I'm like, hey, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm all done. And Bruce hasn't even got his camera on. He says, what, 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 what are you doing? I said, I'm done. That was the most terrifying thing. It was like looking into the depths of hell. And I was sitting there thinking, this is how I'm going to die right here. <laughs> and it never got any less scary. I did, I did creep back up and Bruce is just sitting there, you know, do, 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 do. But for me, that was, that was the most terrifying thing I've ever done by a country mile. Right. Well, and I, I would say the exact same thing when we Such stuck in copier. there. Yeah, really? but but the, the yeah. part you're leaving out is along that edge are all these cracks, you know, like deep cracks in, in the dirt and rock that are, you know, a foot wide. And eventually those are just going to fall. And Bruce will just be standing on one, not thinking anything about it. And he's, he's not the type of man you'd look at and go oh this guy is is super brave he's a tough guy scared of nothing you'd look at him you go okay yeah that guy's like you know i could take him timid. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, i mean he the the huevos on this guy is just <laughs> look at this breaking out the spanish like you I'm, like you I'm, have some i'm pandering to the to the spanish <laughs> to the crowd yeah <laughs> I'm going to share yeah, now the for one moment the Miles Morgan uh, website because uh, as uh, we can see as we can see some of your pictures that you have in common you have been in the in the same places at the same time so yeah. I'm curious about uh, how do you work uh, together because when you are in the same place uh, do you share for, for example uh, this picture or some some places like you have been yeah let's talk about at that. the same yeah, time I, do you share do you share uh compositions I, gear I raw files yeah i find compositions and miles copies them <laughs> yeah, that's okay I mean. okay let me I, i'm gonna i'm gonna tell a quick quick story about the that uh, if you can scroll down to that crack shot again at the bottom um yeah yeah so here. Uh, uh yes so that shot right there. Okay. That was a good day. All right. It was a good day. I, I, it, it, I had gone through a, uh, a pretty significant medical event, very sudden. Um, and to be honest, wasn't really sure I was going to make it. Um, and then slowly kind of made my way back. And after about two months of recovery, I was, I was ready to, you know, just kind of take an easy trip. And the first person I wanted to spend time with was Ryan. And I, I just kind of needed to go clear my head. So we went, deep down into the bowels of Oregon to this place called the Albert Desert, where there's this, this great dried lake bed. And Ryan had been there several times. So he kind of, you know, led, led the way down there. We took our trucks and it was just, you know, I, I honestly felt like, wow, I, I'm, I'm still alive and life just looks a lot better than it did two months ago. And sharing this time with my best friend is just priceless. We get out to this dried lake bed and the, I mean, the, there's a, just a billion cracks and we're looking at the sunrise going, it, it's going to be a good sunrise. And so I'm starting to panic. I'm a little bit still out of sorts and I'm trying to find a composition. Ryan's trying to find a composition. And he, of course, immediately, as usual, finds an incredible one. And I can't find anything. I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting nervous. And so I, I told him, um, you know, the sun's start, starting to get pretty good. And and I said, oh man, my hands are freezing. I left my gloves like half a mile back at the, at the, uh, at the truck. 
I really couldn't, um, I couldn't walk very well. I mean, I, it was, I, I certainly couldn't jog and I couldn't, I was still having a hard time walking. Um, and Ryan said, oh man, just being a good friend. He's like, hey, I'm, I'll go get your gloves. So he took off to get my gloves. My hands were fine, by the way. I took his camera and I moved it over about five cracks and I put my camera down on this composition <laughs> that he had found. And when he came back, he was, I, you know, gave me my gloves. I'm like, thanks man, oh, that's much better. And he's like, God damn, what and he, I could see him kind of just trying to like look around and find something. He's like, I thought I had a good comp dialed. And then here is his comp on, on my shot, which I'm very proud of. Hundred <laughs> percent true. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I guess you you ask each other for feedback before you you post your images. How how does that that work? Are you tough on each other? Are you? Oh yeah. Um, it, and I equate that to to you know our friendship and trust um mm -hmm. you know i i always need an unbiased set of eyes because i have no idea what i'm doing and so anytime i finish a shot i'll send it to miles and he'll give me feedback on it and the, i trust the feedback he's going to give me uh, he, he doesn't pull any punches if something's screwed up with the photo he'll tell me if the photo just sucks he'll tell me and and That's i normal. trust usually it just sucks i know i know <laughs> but uh you, you know i trust his opinion because i i really respect his work and his vision for photography and so if he tells me something i know he's not just being an asshole he's just giving giving me the feedback that i need and the critiques that i need and there's we don't take anything personally when we give each other feedback. It's just honest and, and you know, we can take it or leave it and trust everything he says when I show him a photo. And I have a question for Miles because um, Ryan, we know he's a Nikon guy. In fact, uh, we are watching here today some pixel some pixel because of the Nikon uh, in the stream. But uh, Miles, which kind of gear do you use? Uh, better gear than Ryan. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, so I've got, I, I'm a Nikon guy as well. And, and I will tell you, I started out as a Canon guy and then the Nikon D800 came out. And that was a game changer for the shadow recovery. And that to me was enough to switch. And now that I've switched, I'm kind of stuck. Uh, are you a can? Are you guys Canon guys? Is that what I'm picking up? Yeah, I am. Jose, not not too much, not too many uh, Canon guys in uh, right now in Spain. Are more, a lot of Sony, a lot of people yeah, from Sony. Sony. Okay. okay. Uh, so same sensor. Man, I'm, uh, this is there. We go. Now we're going this way. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Thanks. Thanks for setting this up for me, Ryan. That's great. This guy, uh, this guy, <laughs> no, I'm just all over the room. It's okay. Um, yeah. So Canon, I will give you, uh, Jose, I'm going to give you a Canon shout out. Okay. Because when you shoot lava, Canon is, is 1000% superior. The, the colors way it handles the reds, just, the colors yeah. are spot on and yeah. the Nikon is, it, it never looks right in the Nikon. So that's the one the greenish. where I wish that I was still shooting Canon. That's it, though. The rest of the time, I'm very happy with my Nikon. <laughs> the greenish about Nikon and Sony, it's a bit... Yeah. Always, always, you, uh, we always have to, to, to hear jokes about the greenish of the Sony and Nikon. Always. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, guys, what we talk about the, the worst part of being a photographer. Now, let's talk the about the best part, the most uh, rewarding uh, part of being a photographer. What do you think it is? I'll, I'll take this one. Um, the, the absolute best part is not about the photography. It's about the people I've met. I met Miles through photography, who is now my best friend. We were, you know, he was the best man in my wedding. I was the best man in his wedding. Um, you know, we're just brothers. And I also met my wife through photography, um, you know, the, the love of my life and, and now have this family. So it's, it's all the, 
the things about photography that aren't about the photography, the, the residual, you know, the, the, the people you meet and, and the experiences you have, you know, I've been to some places I probably never would have been to if it weren't for having a camera in my hand. Yeah. 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 It's, it's the people and the, and the experiences. Yeah. I, I gotta, I gotta jump in and concur with that. Um, again, I'm going to be a little bit nauseous, but I have met um, some of the, my favorite people on earth through photography and, and also shared some experiences um, as Ryan's saying, which, which I, we never would have had these, I never would have gone to Iceland probably. Why would you go to Iceland if you're not doing photography? Um, and then ended up, you know, the Northern lights, that would have been fine. But would I have traveled all the way to Norway to go see them? No. Would I have gone to, I, and I did actually, I went to Hawaii before I did pictures and I watched the volcano from the viewing area in a parking lot and went, yeah, okay, that was cool. Um, so these great experiences, but most importantly, you know, for me, I, I am a, I'm an airline pilot, although I'm now um, in a, a management pilot. So I do most, I do, you know, most of my days are in an office. I go fly about once a month or so. And so I get very, very little time to go take pictures anymore. And that's why I'm so excited about the Skyscape Photo Tours in May and July, because I get nine days with that moron down there at the bottom of your screen. I guess he's at the top of your screen, but. Um, figure it out, and, dude. figure it out. Yeah, well, I'd say you got me on two different screens. I mean, what do you want me to do? So that, to me, this is, I really now at this point in my in my quote photography career, going out and taking pictures is completely secondary to going out and spending time with my friends because we get to do these adventures together. And that that means more to me than just about anything in my life other than my my family. Cool. And um, is there something that you have learned from each other? Absolutely nothing. Well, Ryan told me that you, <laughs> Ryan told me in the other stream. Ryan told told us that everything you know, uh, he taught you. That, that is actually that is true. Um, I, I have to again. I feel like I'm going to be nauseous. I really should have taken some some Zofran before I started this interview. Um, he, you know, for those of you that have watched Ryan's videos, mm -hmm. he he has this great style of processing and he, and it's evolved through the years and, and just keeps getting, in my opinion, better and better. And he works really hard at it. I mean, don't let him, don't let the moron sunglasses and the, the cool, you know, stroking the microphone thing. Dude, I look so cool off. right now. Dude, <laughs> how cool do I look? Right? right? He works, he works incredibly hard. I mean, every single day he's processing for hours at a time. He works on his website, but what I think he doesn't get enough credit for, is in the field he is a brilliant compositionalist i think i made that word up right there on the of spot course. um and he just comes up with stuff and i i really just I, I watch him a lot and i watch his videos and i in fairness i would have no portfolio at all you know my my average portfolio is what it is but it would be my kid would take better pictures if it weren't for ryan and she's two <laughs> I, i'm gonna have to kind of kind of disagree because i mean i'm really good at what i do uh, no i'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> no but i i think miles and i learned together i i don't think it was you know he's teaching me something or, or i'm teaching him something you know it's it's kind of a back and forth where um, if i learn something new the first person i'm going to tell is miles because you know we think so similar it's similar about photography that I know he's going to be into it and vice versa. If he learns something new, the first thing he does is tell me about it. And so we, we kind of constantly bounced ideas off of each other and images off of each other. You know, we, we give feedback to, to each other on our, on our shots before we do anything with them. And so it's very much been this symbiotic learning, you know, so I, I don't take, any credit for how good Miles is. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's very important what Miles have, uh, have just said because uh, even Ryan, it's incredible. It's a master, one of the best in the world, of course, about uh, post-processing. But 
uh, there is no it's not it is not possible uh, to see a good picture if it, it is not uh, a good composition and i think that every good photographer it has to be very good with, about composition so of course uh, i always like when people say that because it's not just uh, only post processing it's just uh, the the first thing and the most important thing is composition without any doubt jose yep Okay, so no, no filters here in this answer. <laughs> What's the most awkward situation you have ever been in? In, in photography, in photography. <laughs> My, the, okay, so I guess <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll answer. Yeah, I mean, maybe not the most awkward situation. I mean, there was one time when Miles was taking a, a piss on the side of the road and some like really <laughs> messed up hillbilly drove by and just saw all of Miles's nether regions. But the the one that comes to mind was, it must have been 2012. Miles and I went backpacking up on this mountain called uh, Broken Top. I knew and, you were going there. Yeah, and <laughs> so the, we woke up, shot sunrise, and then we were gonna hike to a different location. And along the way, we found this ice cave and Miles really wanted to get in there and, and shoot this ice cave, but the cave was really small. It, so Miles had to crawl into it and there's rushing water through this ice cave. And so Miles is crawling through this water to, to get his shot. No and shot, by the way, no, no, shot. no shot, totally no wasted time. <laughs> and so now he's soaking wet. So he decides to change his clothes because he doesn't want to hike soaking wet. So he changes his clothes and he only had two pairs of underwear. And so he put on the dry pair and then the wet pair, he hung off of a strap on his backpack to, to let it dry. And so we're hiking along miles with his dirty underwear, you know, <laughs> kind of dangling from his shoulder. And we come across these two other hikers who happen to be like some pretty cute chicks. And so we were just, you know, <laughs> I think we're both single at, at the time and, and so, um, and so, and it was, you know, we weren't hitting on them or anything. We were just sit there talking about the trail and the hike and, uh, and the fact that they were cute girls has nothing to do with it. But Miles is sitting there. Miles is very charismatic and, and holds a conversation well. And, you know, if I'm honest, thinks really highly of himself as a, as a conversationalist. <laughs> and so he's sitting there just charming as can be. And then we say our goodbyes and take off. And I'm sitting there dying laughing because as we had that conversation with those two, two girls, they kept looking over awkwardly at the underwear that was on his shoulder, <laughs> the wet, dirty underwear. Miles is just sitting there, you know, big smile, perfect teeth. And they're glancing over like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? Why is his underwear on his shoulder? <laughs> That that was awkward for Miles, and he didn't even know it. All right, okay, <laughs> my turn, please. Yeah. I'm having a hard time picking because the, I mean I could go with the time that we hiked out of Crater Lake, and in oh, front of, again while we were single, but this group of like ten sorority girls who are on their hike out, and Ryan trying to act all cool as he hikes out with his you know twelve pound backpack on slips and falls and breaks his wrist well so I won't, i'm not going to use that one i'm not going to use the one where we were down at trinidad beach and don't finish, finish the sun okay. <laughs> now we want to hear that one don't. Yeah. i won't tell you about the time we were down at trinidad beach again this is this is we were single i want to make that clear so it's not like uh, you know it, it candace if you're if you ever watch this he was not he's never been untoured while you've been together but we're down at trinidad beach and we finished shooting and these two girls are taking like pictures of each other this is kind of pre-instagram so i'm not sure what they were doing but they were way across the parking lot i mean 100 200 meters out and the next thing i know i'm, I'm kind of like trying casually not to look ryan has got the car door open with the with the tinted window and he's got a 400 millimeter lens just creeping on him. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna no. get me. You're gonna get me canceled. Dude. You're gonna get the reason. <laughs> so, but uh, but one, if I'm honest, one. you also took my camera 
I did want to see, I mean, yeah. what they were doing. I didn't know what they were doing. It was strange. <laughs> um, the, but the one I'm going to use is we, we both had trucks that had rooftop tents. And Ryan, one day, he forgets stuff all the time. We'll go hiking up in the snow and he's got sandals. And he's like, oh, I forgot my boots, dude. And so he's hiking in the sandals. So this day he forgot the, the, the ladder down off the top of the truck. Ryan is not what we would call an athlete. Okay. So he's now on this lifted truck on top. And the only thing that's, you know, below his tent is his spare tire on the back of his truck. And I get up and I'm, Oh, yawn. Okay. I'm going to get out and we're going to get going to shoot. And I see, I hear the tent unzip and I just see the back. I get, I see Ryan's ass just kind of inching out of the back of the, of the truck, like some water buffalo giving birth and then he kind of like <laughs> wiggles his way down onto the top of the tire and then falls onto the ground i mean it was literally the least graceful thing i've ever seen in my entire life <laughs> i have it on video I, I shoot i wish if i knew how to operate this thing i would i would post it on my <laughs> on my screen right now You'll post it in your stories later okay <laughs> we'll do okay so to finalize the the first uh, set of questions um where do you see yourself in five years miles will be dead i'll be dead <laughs> i'll 100 be dead and miles is 87. i am i'm not even 40 yet i am <laughs> so young i'm the youngest 38 year old that's ever existed miles is ancient you, you, you yeah sure that's it buddy I, I am i am old and i will probably be dead five years from now You know what? I, honestly, I hope I have more time for photography. That's what I hope. Mm -hmm. I would love to see the the storm chase tours, the sky tours uh, take off and that be a thing that we do uh, every five years. I don't know that I'll have a whole lot more time than that. I kind of, um, you know, to teach photography, um, I, I, I want to do it with that group of people because it's and storm chasing is awesome. Um, but I would like to have a little bit more time just to take off you know, for a week here and there with my buddy. That would be not Ryan, just a buddy, any other buddy, <laughs> really pretty much anybody, but Ryan. And... I, what I'm looking forward to, honestly, is um, as far as like yeah. Miles and I's friendship is when his daughter's old enough that she can start going on trips with us, because I think it'll be a blast to have, have his, his kid, tag along on camping trips, road trips, whatever. Um, I think that'll be really cool. Yeah, that will be cool. Yeah. And about the, what you have st told about the uh, storm chasing of adventures, if I'm not wrong, uh, that's one of your common passions, a storm chasing adventures. Both of you have a lot of incredible photos of storms. So I would like to know I would like you to introduce to us if you can give us some advices about this type of photography. For example, how do you know where where to go to look for a storm? How to predict the movement of the clouds of the of the? I don't know. I suppose you, that perhaps being miles, an airplane pilot, is very helpful. No, no, it, no, what, it's what, not what, actually. Go, okay. what, Are you talking? Yeah, again? yeah, dude. Okay. Jesus, oh. cut me off. Go right um, ahead. No, the. The best thing is to have a great Steve. forecaster. Yeah, uh, Steve. Steve, our our coworker, our friend, um, you know, he, he's he studied meteorology his entire life, and uh, yeah, he knows so much about the weather that it's scary. Uh, he's also a really incredible guy. I, I love spending time with him. But without him, it would be Miles and I in the middle of Kansas, sitting under blue skies, going, <laughs> what did we do? Exactly. How did we get this exactly. <laughs> And why are there flies in my cheeseburger? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, so, it definitely comes down to, so I do, you know, I study weather for a living. It's a completely different sport. You need to be a severe storm forecaster uh to to really know what you're looking for and and one of the best parts about the tour that we did last year um was getting to to watch steve in action and ask questions he, he's so passionate about it it's really not only is he 
really good at getting us on a storm, but he's really passionate about explaining it to the participants um, so that they can kind of figure it out for themselves and know what models they're looking at. But it's still take it's it, a little bit like flying and a little bit like photography. It's an art in and of itself. I mean, there's a science to it, but there's there is that art where you know some doctors are better than others because they just have a feel for it. And he is he is incredible at what he does, he's, and we're so blessed to be able to, to work with him. He's also a good photographer as well. He is. Yeah, I, I don't he think is. that gets mentioned enough when we when we talk about him. But he's a good. Agree. Shooter. Yep. Agree. And uh, which tripods do you use when? When you are taking photos of storms, do you avoid carbon fiber tripods or any other things that uh, people uh, must uh, should take care about? Really right stuff. And I say that because the the CEO of Really Right Stuff comes on the tours with us, uh, Joe Johnson, who's awesome. Um, and actually, he fixed my tripod for me in the van last year. So this is I'm no longer sending it back to Really Right Stuff. I'm just going to wait for the tours and I'll bring all my broken tripods and I'll let <laughs> spruce them up for me but um no if we're that close and we, we get pretty close but if we're that close then we've made an error where if your tripod you know is attracting attention because yeah as much as we want to be in the in the thick of it we are we are not going to put our clients in, in in danger any more than we add you know i mean that's that's number number one rule so and storms don't necessarily look great when you're right under them you you need to be a a distance away to actually see them and see the structure of a storm so you know we, we're not in the thick of it you know and uh, ryan i don't know uh, if you can introduce to us about uh i don't know if you want to share your your screen about how many photo tours are you organizing this year or to, uh, what location will you will be visiting uh or the most challenging if you can tell us something about your calendar on the and the places you are going to visit yeah so we've we've got several uh, there's joe right there yep there's that's there's the joe. ceo right the right stuff uh we've got several tours we're we're doing this year uh if they they all start in denver colorado and then they go wherever the storms are every day we wake up we you know we confer with Steve. Steve puts together the game plan of what the best scenario is for storms. And that could be, you know, a hundred miles away. It could be 500 miles away. Um, it's, it really is chasing. And, and so we just kind of base everything off of the storms and, and where we're going to go. And then the logistics around that of getting people into good lodging, wherever we're going to end up is super important to us. We, we don't want to, we, we don't want to just be sleeping in the van on the side of the road. So we make sure we get good lodging wherever we're going. We um, try. It's hard we, out in Burlington, yeah. Iowa. Yeah. It, it, we, we get the best of what we can. Um, you know, sometimes these storms take you into the middle of nowhere and, uh, and, and that's fine. You know, it's, it's about getting, getting the shots, making memories, seeing these storms because, they're incredible to witness, like mind-blowingly cool. But um, yeah, we've we've got several trips coming up this year. Miles two and, and I are we're doing two. Yeah, you, you and I are doing two together. It's May fourteenth, another one. Yep, and yeah. then we're doing seven as well. Yes, and Bruce Amori is doing some, and. One of the guys I, I love most in the world, David Thompson. Uh, yeah. if, if you don't know who, who David Thompson is as a photographer, you're you're not paying attention to photography at all. He's one of the best photographers and uh, one of my favorite humans. But he's uh, he's doing one of them. So yeah, you know, I'm I'm just super excited to get out there and, and chase storms again. I mean, it's it's going to be a blast. <laughs> Cool. Can you can you describe a normal day in a, in a photo tour? Yeah. So usually we I'm I'm, I'm done listening to Ryan. He, his voice annoys me. He looks like Stevie Wonder, and so I can't take it seriously. Dude, so, how cool how cool do I look though? Right? You, you're so you know what's gonna be weird. 
we're going to finish this interview, gents, and he is going to sit there for the rest of the day, like taking <laughs> selfies of himself in this exact position. He's not going to be doing anything. He's just going to be sitting there thinking he looks cool. Jeez, I can't take it. Anyway, um, so we wake up in the morning and usually, so Steve has the long range models and, and he's usually looking a few days out. So we're, um, we, we spend time sort of going forward, whether it's down in New Mexico or way up in North Dakota, you know, okay, well, what does it look like? What's our best chance of today, tomorrow, and the day after that? Um, we, we'll get up in the morning, have a breakfast, um, kind of confer about what's the best plan of attack. And then we, we get going because usually the storms don't start popping off till two, three in the afternoon. Uh, but we want to make sure we are where they are uh, to intercept by about then. So we'll drive and it's usually a decent drive. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of van time, which is, uh, which there's a lot of usually smells emanating from Ryan. Um, Dude, that me? We, that we all have to deal with. <laughs> you're, you're known in our group of friends as the gassiest person ever. The, the, the unwritten rule is don't hike behind Miles. Miles hikes at, at the back of the group. It's fiber. You gotta have your fiber. Uh, <laughs> So and then we'll we'll chase and we'll chase until you know after sunset. Sometimes we can be on storms for quite a quite a bit of time and and usually in that area you'll have a storm that'll fire and then you know we're we're working with the clients to get them the best shots. But um, Steve is is and we got Justin is also going to be there, the dreadlock traveler. Um, Justin's going to do a tour with us this year too, which is great. He's an, also a wonderful forecaster. But but they're working at the same time to make sure that hey, if there's another storm on this line that's 10 kilometers away that, w that they think is going to fire better, we're, we're gone. We're in the van. We're moving to get ahead of that storm and get positioned. And there's a lot of country roads we've got to figure out how to intercept. And uh, so the days are, you know, once we get on the storm, they go very quickly and they're, and they're fast paced. And then we'll find a place to eat dinner and, and, uh, and go to sleep for the night and then do it again the next day. Cool. Do you do any editing during the, the tours or just focus on photography? Yeah, I, I always do editing with everybody. We'll, we'll sit and process photos with each other. Uh, it's a different style of processing I've mm -hmm. found um, because, I mean, you're mostly just editing a sky. You know, we're so used to editing landscapes, but this is just a sky. So there's a lot of different techniques I use or techniques that I've modified a little bit to uh, to work with storm photography. But yeah, we, we cover all that as well. Cool. And now we are going to, to begin uh, a game, uh, a funny game between, between Miles and Ryan. We are going to make some questions from for both of them, but before I have a question for Ryan Dyer. I have a question because in the in the last stream, in the in the last stream, uh, there was a lot of fun and intrigue about what's gone, what was behind Ryan Dyer's door. So a lot of people ask about that. What was behind Ryan Dyer's door? And people make some made some memes about. Beyond the door of Ryan Dyer. <laughs> <laughs> so people people say that if if there was something something uh, I don't know something out of this world behind that door. <laughs> what do you have behind? Uh, honestly, it's just like boxes to cameras and iPhones and. I, I always, for some reason, save boxes of, from stuff I've bought because I think oh, maybe I'll, I'll sell it later on, mm -hmm. and so I should keep the box. But, <laughs> I, I mean, it's boxes for stuff that I don't even own anymore, phones that were broken <laughs> and were thrown away five years ago. For some reason, I still have the, the box to it. Um, and they're just magically lit up? Yeah. <laughs> so, please... <laughs> Yeah. There's also a lot of um, pictures that Miles has sent me over the years that he thinks I want to see. They're unsolicited. He sends them to me. And so I keep all of those um, in the closet as well. Nudes. Because it's, in there. That's, 
Yeah, well, at some they're point... They're so hot, they combust? No, at some point, I'm going to press charges against you, <laughs> and I need to keep the evidence of all the very creepy photos you've sent to me over the years. <laughs> Jose, uh, can okay. you introduce the game we are going to play between yeah. both of these cracks? So, guys, I, I don't know if you are familiar with the, the shoe, guy, shoe game. It's uh, the game that uh, couples usually do during their wedding. <laughs> That's a good one. Look at this pink car. Look at that thing. I don't even know what that is. Is it a Fiat? <laughs> Seat. It's a, it's a, it's a Sp Spanish it's a, car. It's a Seat, uh, the, the, Seat the, the, pink, the pink car is a Seat Panda. Spanish car. Oh, it's a, pa a panda. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Ryan looks fast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would, I would still drive that thing faster than you. You, you cannot drive. Now, now tell the people what you've said about me as a driver. Tell them. All right, I'm going to take my helmet off. I because it's hurting my head. But I was ready for whatever you were going to throw at me. Um, so I will say, Ryan. Ryan can drive. He, I, I've, I've watched us get into a couple of, of sketchy situations that there are not a lot of people on earth that would have driven out of. Oh, God, I'm sick. Where's my, I need a oh, bucket. I, I mean, I'm Fernando Alonso. We know this. <laughs> you, listen, okay. We went to a Formula One race, one Formula One race, and Ryan's, you know, girlfriend, Girl crush Fernando Alonso is, oh, Fernando, I can't wait to see Fernando. <laughs> Fernando comes down corner one through corner two to where we're at corner four and wrecks on lap, lap one. one. Ryan yeah. Dyer wrecked Fernando Alonso. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. My, my one time seeing Fernando Alonso. Yep. In he got person. to see one corner. Yeah. He, yep. he, that's so creepy. That's so creepy. <laughs> Is I think is the, the the worst uh wax figure I have seen in my life. It's oh, yeah. horrible. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so Jose, okay, it's your yeah, turn. Yeah. So I, right. I was saying um are you familiar with the, the shoe game that people do in weddings? No. Okay, it's it's a thing here in the Midwest. So you have uh a paper I'm going to ask you to, to cut the paper in two pieces and you're going to write in one of them an R for Ryan and M for Miles. So you need to- Got it. Yep. Hold on, I'm not very good. I don't have to, the tools for the job, but I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it work. Got it. Okay. I need a better marker. God, I wish <laughs> I had using a pink. marker? I don't yeah, know I what he's going know, to do. I, I wanted to get a pink one for you, but- you're using a marker? I haven't used well, a marker not, since I, I, I was four years old. <laughs> I got a, I got a two-year-old. What do you want? Uh, I mean, should, should I bring you some crowns? You, did, you brought me slime last time, son, and balloons. So That's right. you want to talk about that? Kinsley loves me. She, she does love her Uncle Ryan. Okay, uh, hang on. I'm making it. I, I'm, I'm yep. trying to color it so that people can see. So I, yeah, I put an yeah, R and an M. Yep. Yeah, make it Got visible. It. Okay. Um, Hence the marker would have come in handy, moron. So next, uh, I'm going to ask you to maybe turn your back to the camera or somehow don't look at the don't look at the stream, because okay. I'm going to we're going to ask you some questions, and you're going to answer just uh, holding the name. This is going to be this is going to take some coordination. Yeah, I must say that thing. I don't know what are, what we are going to do. Jose is <laughs> I don't know. Wait, wait, let me stop. Yeah, here we go. So it work? If your answer is yep. Okay. So let, let's do this... the same for Ryan. Ryan, if you can hold the R on your right hand, that would be cool. Can we see it? Let me see. We, I probably should have mirrored my R. Sorry about that. We we see. Uh... The yeah. are, that's okay. Not very well, but okay. Let's assume you have the, the R on your right hand. So that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so we are going to start with some questions. You just raise the paper uh, depending on the, your, your answer, okay? So let's start here. First question. 
Who's the picker when it comes to locations? Ooh, who's pickier? So just raise your paper, okay? Let let's wait for Ryan. Ryan is taking. Okay. <laughs> who spends more who... money? Oh, yeah. sorry. Who has spent? Who spends more money on camera gear? Ryan, turn, turn, turn a lot. Turn that. You can I, turn I the other side. Just the other side. Out. I knew he couldn't figure this out. <laughs> mice, mice, mice. Okay, good. Um, next question. Who tends to forget or miss the data essential, like keys, wallet, cards, Oof. or even camera gear? That's a tough one. I mean, Miles' one. nickname is My, Miles. Is. Miles, where is Morgan? Because he's yeah, always David going, Thompson. Where is this? Where is that? So he loses everything. But okay. I've seen you. I've seen you do a lot of things without shoes. Well, he he said essentials. Uh, so I mean, you sense. you lose little things. So I, I'm gonna have to say it's, it's me. okay. Good. <laughs> Who has a better taste in music? Oh. <laughs> um, Miles listens to the music that like thirteen-year-old girls listen to. That's true, but you like it. You like Sledgehammer? Sledgehammer was our jam. It was. Um... Okay. Who follows a more organized life lifestyle? Um, pre kid or post kid <laughs> let's say currently okay <laughs> interesting and who is better dealing with people Ryan's an absolute <laughs> moron, so that's what's easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> who's who's clumsier? Classier? Cla clumsier. Clumsier. <laughs> oh, clumsier. Oh, unfortunately. I don't know though. You broke your hand in a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And who is more likely to get lost? when going somewhere new oh i can we can we circle back to this when we're done i want to talk about this for just a second yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. now we can go back about that <laughs> so ryan is like me he got lost everywhere uh, it's so bad it's it's comical <laughs> <laughs> Who who's always late Ooh. We're both pretty punctual. Um, um, do you want to talk about the time that I went up and got a great sunrise at Rowena and you were sleeping in the Walmart parking lot? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've got a point. Yep. Okay. And who is the most stubborn? Yeah, no, nah, no, nope. I gotta fix that one. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. So, um, so Myers, you you wanted to explain a little bit more about the who is more likely to get lost when? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so let me just tell you, when it comes to reading charts and maps and things like that, we we went out shooting. <laughs> Right Here before we I moved to Denver. Here we go. You earned this one. And, and I told them, I'm like, Ryan, I'm maxed out, brother. I have so much to do. I need you. Just find us. You know, here's the, the, the weather is going to be this. We'll go to the coast. We decided find us a spot where the tides line up. We've all sh we've, we've shot the Oregon coast a lot. So we know what the spots are where the tides are going to line up and what good locations are going to be. 
we get out to this spot that's a little bit tricky to get to and at high tide it's completely inaccessible so we, we walk out there and i'm looking at it it's a cool waterfall coming down and and the sea stacks and the waves are coming in i'm like oh, okay we get to the beach and ryan's like yeah okay so this is high tide and it's going out now and i'm like oh it's, i kind of wanted it to be just a little higher but it's just about right and we're still about an hour from sunset so take my bag way up the beach plop it on the ground i go back and i'm looking brand new camera first time i've used it my nikon z7 II, which now nobody will ever buy when i try to sell it and i'm out there shooting and man I, like a wave kind of comes up to my feet and i'm like i huh? thought i was pretty safe here but it's okay 20 minutes goes by i'm shooting the waves now up to my knees wow these rogue waves are really getting sketchy and then one comes and blasts me off the rock my camera gets soaked and I hear Ryan screaming like a seven-year-old girl at a Justin Bieber concert. And I look back, and both of our bags are floating out to sea in the tide. <laughs> Flo open, wide open, and floating, floating out to sea. And I go running off the rock, you know, almost break my arm. I get the, I get the bag, and I'm like, Jesus. All right, well, that wasn't – clearly those rogue waves are big. i got to put it further up the beach. So I put it in this cave way up the beach. And then I go back out and shoot. I'm pretty intense on, you know, I don't get to shoot much. So this is my chance. I'm really, I'm in it. And we're shooting the, and the, the light's actually pretty spectacular. Um, kind of stormy light with some kind of sun rays breaking through. And so I'm shooting, shooting. And this moron says to me, hey, your bag. I turn around and now my bag is floating out to sea again. He's got his on his back. Mine is, and I'm like, how? <laughs> this, this guy this guy reads the tide chart from like 1997. The tide was coming in, not going out. It's a simple, uh, you had one job. You had one job. And then trying to get out of there, by the way, in high tide was getting, and he fell and almost, I think he hurt his back, which was so justified. You know, because he's making fun of me because I had all the rain gear. I was like, oh, you look like the fisherman, Gordon Fisherman's, whatever. So can I be completely honest? Please. When, when you were really sick and it was looking like maybe you wouldn't make it, um, you, you called me and, and told me that, uh, you put me in your world <laughs> and that, you know, all your camera gear, your, your computer, everything is yeah. going to be left to me, which made True. me cry a lot. Um, just because it was think. a very emotional yeah. thing, but and now before, knowing be, that, yeah. I, I keep trying to kill you <laughs> yeah, it does, in ways actually. that that aren't obvious. Yeah, yeah, and so I just I keep screwing it up. So, you know, I it was just a foiled attempt at murder. <laughs> okay, I, I, that makes a lot more sense, and I that just came out now, folks. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. And before going to the last game, uh, a game that Ryan told me about uh, about uh, he wanted to do, uh, I want to, to ask people in the chat if they have any question, uh, any other kind of questions. I have several that I have uh, already marked. For example, people is interested about uh, who delays more time before pressing the shutter. Who, who thinks... Who takes more time to think about the composition before beginning to shoot pictures? Ryan or Mike? Me. 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 100%. Dude, do you, do you remember that time? It was the first time you, me, Sheldon, and Steve, and Tim went shooting. Yep. We went to Silver Falls State Park. Yep. And you guys were sitting there running around like maniacs, you know, yep. shooting everything. Yep. And I sat there patiently, yep. you know, knowing the comp I, I wanted. And I went in there and I deliberately shot one composition. That was uh, honestly the best composition of the of the place. <laughs> and, you know, hey, it's just nuts. kind of. Listen to the question. The question is, who delays longer before they push the shutter? And I said me, because I was going to use that same story, you idiot. <laughs> where you just sit down, plop the shutter, and you get the best shot ever from that spot. Listen to the question. God, what, how do I find this guy? Uh, yeah, I'm saying, uh, I'm saying uh, I delay longer. 
You sit there no, like a you maniac. Just, who delays? Like who is more deliberate about the composition? Who takes longer to? Who takes longer to set up? Me, you moron. No, it's <laughs> yeah. me. I I sit there and I wait and I think. I, I sit in it and I'm very deliberate, de deliberate with my actions. You run around like a maniac shooting 50 different compositions. And I sit there and I focus on the one that's good. <laughs> people, it's asking also uh, the, this time to Miles if, uh, if people is curious about if uh, when it's time to post processing, uh, do you have any order? Do you follow the same steps when you are going to post process in the picture, or it 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 depends of the picture? You know, uh, if I'm totally honest, I just start moving sliders around, hope for the best. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> uh, what I will say is this, and I I think Ryan will will back me up on this, although who knows with him, but. Um, I tend to follow the same general process for a certain mood. So uh, the moods will be different, right? If it's a low key or, or a high key or kind of um, soft light or, or harsh light, I'll, I'll do kind of the same steps. But I've been noticing over the last decade, the processing's gotten more and more and more minimalist. minimalist. It used to be, and, and Ryan was the, the best at this, was this painterly It, you almost couldn't tell it was a picture, any, a photograph anymore. It almost became a, a, a painting. And that was a lot of fun. And that was sort of the style back then. But I've noticed that uh, in my own work, I find myself becoming more and more and more subdued, probably because I have less time to practice and I'm getting worse at post-processing. <laughs> and did anyone ruin the shoot from each other in a planned way? Constantly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, Miles, you know, having me go get his gloves from his truck and then moving my camera off of my composition. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he's constantly trying to to ruin my shots so that he gets the good ones, yeah. which, you know, I completely respect because I do the same thing. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very competitive. Uh, We really don't like each other when we're around each other. We no. like each other when we're not next to each other. But yeah. when we get together, we hate each other. <laughs> and th there is, and I'm, I, I am not kidding when I say this. There is nothing that makes me happier than when Ryan f's up a, a shot and I get a shot. That is, <laughs> that, that to me is the ultimate <laughs> high in photography. Is when Ryan gets comes away swearing because he didn't get a shot and I got one. It's true. So happy. Uh, true. People is asking be, before uh, before uh, Jose introduced the, the the next game. Uh, I have a, a funny questions. Miles, did you put Ryan in your compositions so mountains look bigger? <laughs> <laughs> What is this? <laughs> It's, I come on here oh, that time. You, you know what I. It, You know what's a great tool is the liquify tool, and I just take his I take his sides and just expand them out, just slowly, slowly. <laughs> yep. And then lately, I haven't had to do that because he's doing it all by himself. So <laughs> I, I come on here and give my generous time and get berated. <laughs> How dare you! <laughs> Hey, okay. I gotta say, I saw a couple oh. real quick. I saw a couple of chats yeah. about the airplane. Uh, it's United people. Come on now, let's get serious. Thank you. Just a little plug for the home team. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Jose. Okay, so now we are going to to ask um, some question that Ryan and, and Miles wrote to to wrote to each other. They don't they don't know. What question? So we are going to start with Ryan. And these are some questions from Myers, about Myers. <laughs> so first one, Ryan, when is Myers' birthday? April 18th. And I, <laughs> I know this. I, I only know that because it's my dad's birthday as well. <laughs> yeah, that's so cheating. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, go, go on, okay. go on, Jose. Go on, Jose. 
Go, José. Um, what's Myers favorite color? Blue. It's got to be blue. Something, I mean, something so predictable. I, I think it's blue. He wore this obnoxious blue suit at his wedding. That I, I, suit was money. That Are suit, you kidding it was, me? It was pretty cool. It, it was a good suit with, with those brown Listen, shoes. Stevie, it, it I, good, but... you, you don't even want to go there with style with me. Dude, look at me. Look how cool and young I look right now, dude. <laughs> you know, you're like, you're probably one of those guys that skis in your jeans. Okay. Next question. In which U.S. state was Myers born? I know it was back east somewhere. I don't think it was Connecticut, although maybe it was Connecticut, but I, I think it's New York. <laughs> And that's, that's right. So far, I'm, I'm really pissed off right now. I got to be honest. You got three out of three. Wow. No. If Miles could only use one lens, one lens for the rest of his life, which lens would it be? I'm going to say the 24 to 70. The only reason I don't say the 14 to 24 is because that's so limiting. I think he would use the 24 to 70, and if he needs wider, he just shoot panoramas. I need 14, it's 24. Than the one I, he's wrong, but I, but I probably, if I thought it through, I'd use the 24 to 120, or is it 100? Whatever one I just got. You tell I haven't oh. shot much lately. Jose. Yep. Uh, who is Myers? Favorite photographer. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's me. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to come across as, you know, as a big shot or anything. Um, I would say maybe David Thompson or Mark Adamus. I, I, I'm going to say Mark Adamus. Okay, so the, the answer we got here is I get to read it, okay? Ryan Dyer, which makes me want to puke. <laughs> <laughs> If that doesn't count... Uh, I, I think that counts, because the first thing I said was me. It, because... it counts, it counts, it's fine. I mean, uh, I'm fine, I'll give it to him. It's fine. I've, Just I've taken it. him under my wing and molded him. Got it, right in your hair. armpit hair, is where, it's yeah. like, where it's moist and never washed. <laughs> he, he also mentioned Ian, Ian Plant. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Ian Plant, that's a really good one. And what's my favorite photo he has ever taken? Um, Difficult I question. Think, I think it might be his shot of the weeping walls. Nope. Um, or... It's his shot of him standing on the volcano. Yeah, that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And do you do you want to know what's funny about that photo? I found that composition and started shooting it first. And then <laughs> he saw me shooting it, and I kind of told him what I was doing with this panorama. He was like, "Oh, okay." So, you know, his favorite photo was a comp that I came up with. Which I, I, really I really, by the way, I really like that, that, that photo. Not only the composition, uh, the foreground, but also the, the world, the red reflection in the body. Oh, uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it's mice, as you told. Yeah. The, the reflection yeah. in the arm and the leg, I, I really like. Um, of course, the contrast between colors, it's an incredible, an incredible photo. It's a really Thank you so thing. much. And and by the way, you'll note that Ryan wasn't smart enough to think about making it into self a self portrait. I had to come up with that one. So, uh, and I will say that the only reason that this is not the best photo I've ever taken compositionally or the most interesting, but it's my favorite and will always be my favorite because it reminds me of one of the 
most amazing things I've ever done or seen. Yeah. Okay, and last one. What is Meyer's favorite film of all time? Top Gun. <laughs> Because he he thinks he's like a badass fighter pilot. But really, he's just a bus driver in the sky. <laughs> okay, so let, let's count how many you got right. And that, that's wrong, by the way. It's wrong. the right... The right stuff. Duh. I don't oh, know okay. which film it's. The right stuff. You haven't seen the right stuff? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I should have known that because yeah, Miles a different made... translation to Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Miles made me watch it. Um... <laughs> Spanish is Elegidos para la Gloria. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You got to see that. It's phenomenal. It is. <laughs> so you got the birthday, color. The state he was born, technically the land, so that's four. The photographer, the favorite picture. He didn't get so, that one right. He said weeping walls. I had to. Show I did. Him. I did say the weeping walls. I I got that one wrong. Okay, okay. So you you got five five right. Perfect. All right. It's good result. I, I five from high. seven. Yeah. Five, five out, out of seven. seven. I, I set the bar high. <laughs> a good friend. A good friend. <laughs> okay, Jose. So, right. yeah, quite, now uh, my turn. First question when is Ryan's birthday? December 8th. That's right. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> And what's Ryan's favorite color? Pink. No. Nope. <laughs> Olive. I don't even. I don't even. I have it written. It. it was worth it just to take the shot. <laughs> Olive green. Olive green. Olive green. <laughs> strange. Yeah, strange because color. Because original. Blue. Strange I was color. Going with, I was going to go with red because you wore those Dorothy ruby red slippers the last time when we drove to to Denver. <laughs> dude, you mean my Jordans, dude? Yeah, exactly those. <laughs> Okay, in which uh, U.S. state was uh, Ryan born? Missouri. And that's that's wrong. Ka Kansas. <laughs> oh, you were in Kansas? Yeah, uh, <laughs> the the Kansas City, the Kansas side of Kansas City. Oh my God! Okay, that's <laughs> I get a half point for that. That's baloney. Uh, okay, that, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll give Kansas you that. Kansas City. Kansas City's in Missouri. He's making uh, yeah. up stuff now. Okay, no, that they, sounds right. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll let you have that one. Thank you. <laughs> If Ryan could only shoot one area, in one area for the rest of his life, where would it be? Hmm. I'm having a hard time between Norway and Glacier. I'm going to go with Glacier. And I think it's right. I don't have the, the answer, but... In the other, uh, uh, in the past stream, I remember Ryan told about uh, the place he really liked the most was the Glacier National Park. Uh, am I right, Ryan? Yep, he, he got that right. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I want to go also to Rock Gla Glacier National Park one day. Come over, let's do it. Oh, <laughs> uh, you gotta come. <laughs> okay, how does Ryan sharpen his images for the web? What, what tool? Um, what tool? A knife. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, uh, he, you know what? Hang on a sec, because we had this discussion. He doesn't actually. For his website, he does not sharpen them. Is this true? Okay, we we got a different answer from Ryan. Uh. Ryan. <laughs> remember that was the big thing with that wix site you couldn't figure out what made it bad you just decided if i don't sharpen it sharpens it perfectly um did no that's not the case anymore <laughs> that hasn't been the case for like two years whatever see you don't even talk to me anymore right <laughs> i mean on purpose no i, I use the the tony kuiper web sharpening okay yeah. well I, you know i'm you going to ask you later about one. how you had to not sharpen 
I'm going to ask you later uh, another thing about sharpening. And what was the first, the Ryan's first camera? Um, it was Canon. before. It was before we met. Canon. It wasn't the Canon 5D. That can, it was a Canon, um, probably like a digital rebel. A Canon 40D. 40D. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I think it's a right answer. Perfect. Okay, and last question uh, we we got. Oh, it. sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was just saying, I'll, I'll, I'll let him get that one. It's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what fruit or veggie does Ryan hate? Tomatoes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, so it's the weirdest thing. What I mean, who hates tomatoes? <laughs> who hates onions and fish? I, I uh, anyway, continue. No, that that was actually the last one, and you got the birthday. Um, uh, Ryan's favorite area for for shooting, uh, first camera, and the last one. So you got four. Okay. Okay. We can yes. Almost at the road. Hi. <laughs> the princess. Hello. Hi, Kinsley. The princess. Like my like my like like my daughter. <laughs> the same. With the same dress, more or less. <laughs> and I have a question for both of you. I don't know if if you know because uh, there is another plugin uh, and it's totally free. I don't know if you have already Test it, or did you know? About oh yes, it? from yep. Andres Res, yep. the it's a plugin. It it works really fine. I yes. I want to share in a, in a future video in YouTube. I talk also with Andres Res about it, and I think it works perfect for people who who perhaps doesn't use Tony Kuiper. Did you did you test this? I, I've yes. tried it. It's phenomenal. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, uh, I've compared it side by side with the Tony Kuiper web sharpening, and it's almost identical. Uh, I, yeah. you know, I, I wouldn't be able to tell a difference, um, which is great because the Andreas Resch sharpener is mm -hmm. free. You don't have to buy the, the yeah. Tony Kuiper actions. That's what I wanted to, to share now, uh, yeah. because a lot of people I, I'm using always uh, Tony Kuiper for me. It's, an, it's my, I always say it's my, uh, I absolutely need the Tony Kuiper plugin uh, for luminosity mask, uh, vibrance and all my work and i also uh, use for for uh, for a little sharpening for for website but this plugin also works perfect especially for for people who who is not using tony kuiper absolutely and i have aquí i have another question from rocio magalde and for uh, it's a question to miles morgan which uh, which kind of lens is the that you don't don't like or like less than others or perhaps it's difficult it's more difficult for you to work with some kind of lens so i just got the uh, 100 to 400 um i haven't even gotten to play with it yet i had the they prior to that i had the 80 to 400 and that for me is far and away the toughest lens i'm terrible at it like David Thompson gets that lens on and he just turns into a magician and I am just just spraying and praying because I have no idea what to do with the thing at all. And do you have any plan for the for the following months besides uh, the besides uh, tours and photo photo so any other photo plans? Weekend. Yep, this weekend I'm going to go shoot with David um, probably in New Mexico and that's that's the first time I've gotten to pick up my camera since November. And then I probably won't get a chance to go out again until our May tour, which I can barely take. I'm so excited for. <laughs> it's going to be phenomenal. Have you visited Spain, uh, Miles, or not? I have not, and I want to. So when am I coming? Let me know. Tell me when I'm coming uh, over. <laughs> you, just, uh, you just have to put a day, and you can, you can put Ryan in the back. Okay, and uh, bring, we we won't bring, bring, him. bring him with you. <laughs> we won't bring him. People is also asking about. Uh, I can't remember if Ryan uh, answered this or not in the last stream, 
Which uh, color space do you work with? Uh, Adobe? I don't know. So do I, work I with... shoot now in ProPhoto. Um, Pro but, but, but process in uh, 1998 Adobe. By the way, uh, Antonio, uh, who just took a, 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 a wicked shot at me, which I appreciate fully, saying, thank God my daughter doesn't look like me. And I, I agree with him, but I kind of feel like Ryan fed him that line. I, I didn't say a word, dude. <laughs> Antonio, I got mad respect. That was, that, was, uh, that was outstandingly, that was well done, my friend. I agree. I mean, thank God she looks like her mom. <laughs> so I think I don't have any other questions. I don't know, uh, Ryan uh, or or Miles, if you want to to share something else about about the the tours, about the about the, your future projects. Um, yeah, uh, check out skyscapephototours.com if you want to come uh, shoot storms. It's one of my favorite things I've done with a camera. Um, and you, you'll probably get to see miles and I fist fight. Yeah, definitely. Person, definitely. Uh, which is, I mean, that's worth it right there. I mean, it's, it's going to be a boxing match and we are taking wagers. You can, you can place bets. Um, miles, miles, double is his not, size. miles is not the odds on favorite, but, um, yeah, that and my tutorial videos. Still, you can use the code Ivan thirty five. Yeah, yeah. To, I have uh, already. The, the the bot is also remembering. Uh, I I have seen that you you change the the URL, <laughs> the the website. Uh, yes. And now yeah. it's different. It's different. Nice yeah, job. So I have way to go, Ryan. Yeah, just go to I Ryan. Have already, uh, I've, yeah, I've got a new. I website. have already updated. Yeah. Yeah, so I've I've got a new website, but um, yeah, yeah. they're the latest three uh, have Spanish subtitles. Yeah. So for uh, anybody over there, um, yeah, I, yeah. I started I rem- Spanish subtitles. I remember you told about, and it's here defined. Narrated in English with optional Spanish subtitles embedded. Yeah, and I have now both some questions. Miles, uh, you are a pilot. Have you done? Have you taken uh, pictures from the from the air, from the, or not? On the record or off the record? <laughs> uh, nobody's <laughs> listening to us. Uh, you know, occasionally it's really. Hard. I mean, I tried it a long time ago. It's really hard to shoot out of yeah. out of the glass. Uh, the yeah. glass is so thick and it's curved and it's super, super distorted. So. Um, I haven't really done done that. Um, I'd love to. I mean, I think it's the views are really amazing, but um, no, nah, it, it's that doesn't really come out very well. And do you share your gear as you are? Do I do I share it uh, like with, with, Ryan? with Ryan? With Ryan? Absolutely um, not. I don't let him touch. No, myself. there was <laughs> there was one time. It's funny. I was just telling this story to to my wife Candace the other day. Um, like back when miles and I first met, he was going on some trip and his camera was getting repaired and he wasn't going to get it back in time to go on his trip. So I let him borrow my camera in this. It, we'd known each other for, I don't know, like a month. And uh, so I lent him my camera and he used it and came back and, and was very, you know, thankful and appreciative and gave it back to me. And then like two days later, I'm walking through REI, it's a sporting goods store here in the States. And I'm looking at a pair of uh, boots for snowshoeing and I'm trying them on. And all of a sudden Miles walks by. He goes, dude, what are you doing here? I said, uh, oh, I'm just buying a pair of boots. And, uh, to show his appreciation for lending him my camera, he bought the pair of boots, the pair of North Face boots that, that were like 250 bucks. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, he ended up buying them for me as a, as a way of showing appreciation for letting me, or the, 
for me letting him use my camera. <laughs> and, and, and now my, he uh, takes a dump yep. on me constantly. So that was a great, that was money well spent. <laughs> and what do you think about drone photography? It's that's a question I already asked uh, Ryan in the in the other stream. Do you think uh, drone photography uh, drones are a must for landscape photographers right now? Uh, it's it's honestly I think it's my favorite type of photography. If you if for, it depends on the location, right? So our national parks we can't use drones. And there's a lot of areas that are off limits, but. If I go to a place that has drone photography allowed, I'd almost rather have that than my camera. If I had to pick one thing to bring, I'd probably bring that. I love the fact that the the angles and perspectives are so totally different and unique. I wish the you know the quality is getting a little bit better, but um, you know I'm I'm excited for the next generation of of a real breakthrough sensor technology in drones because it's my favorite type of photography. I already have a, a drone, a DJI Mini 2, but in Spain at least it's very difficult to, to use because of the mm. of the CTR for the for the for forbidden places, and it's not easy to find a place to to fly. Uh, I suppose perhaps in the United States in those in iconic places like Utah, like uh, national parks, it is possible to 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 fly the drones there. So not in the national parks that's forbidden there, uh, but what is great about, particularly the Southwest United States, there are just kilometers of open areas that have no restrictions on them. And you can get way out there in the middle of nowhere and find hmm. great stuff that may not work from the ground, but work from the air. And a lot of people, some people is asking, no, this question, Enrique Tivoli, it's asking about if you can teach me how to fly. <laughs> Absolutely. Because so, of my... <laughs> yeah. So here's... <laughs> that's, that's, nice. that's, that's my drone in the second day of the trip to Lofoten. Looking this... good. <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> I, 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 didn't Miles... realize, I didn't realize there was a mountain, a mountain behind me. <laughs> Uh, Miles is not the one to teach you how to fly drones. No. <laughs> he... uh, oh, c continue. This will be, this I will think be you have a, 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 a curious a story about one of your photos, no? Yeah, when, when we were shooting Factory Butte. You remember that? Yeah, I'm going, I to, I'm going to look for that. You, you professional pilot who almost <laughs> lost his, his drone. Did I get it back? Barely. Cutting edge, baby. Barely. Cutting edge. Yeah, he flew it like like two miles away. <laughs> it was, you know, he had a tailwind going out, so it flew super quick going out. And then, you know, he's shooting, and then his battery starts to starts to die. And so he starts to fly it back. And now he's got a headwind. And he didn't give himself enough battery life to get it back. I did because I know what I'm doing with aviation. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, he, it probably took 15 minutes just to fly back when it took five minutes to fly out. And did the literally, drone come back? Did the drone yes, come back? But I heard, I heard warnings out of that drone that I'd never heard before. Like <laughs> insufficient battery for landing. Like it was just going to shut itself off. <laughs> So yeah, I was so you were you really you really want to talk about this because the first time that you ever showed me your fancy drone up in the San Juans and I'm like, oh, this is really cool. I'm watching on the back of his phone and he starts flying away and it, off it goes. And where's that drone now, Ryan? It's in the uh, American basin somewhere. It just yeah, took, it's he, he flew it off the end of the earth and it's gone. It's so I'm somewhere... not sure this is the. Yeah. Yes, somewhere at 13,000 feet, probably buried in snow right now. Yeah, is that drone. Um, so maybe not the best that, story for you. That was technical problems. That that, that was technology <laughs> failing me. That was not me failing my technology like you did. Didn't fail. I, I've i never lost my drone. Not true. <laughs> uh, I never get crushed? Nope. 
the second day in Lofoten. What what a bad luck. The second day from a seven days trip. In the second day, my drone absolutely crashed. Uh, Abi Duque was asking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking. Was asking about if about uh, about miles. Uh, in which medium do you feel most comfortable? Uh, wet, hot, cold, hot, dark, or in the air? I suppose. Hmm. Well, I could I could go say hot and wet, but that would probably not go over well. So I'll, I'll leave that. <laughs> um, um, I like. You know, I, I like dark. I like the uh, I like night photography. I like stars and kind of twilight and it, especially if you got a bad sky, it can kind of make up for a bad sky. You still get an interesting shot. Jose. Yep. Uh, we have another question from Beaches. Um, Myers, you being a, a pilot, what's the most impressive things from the, from the highs uh, to watch lightning, rain, clouds, Lightning is uh, is fantastic, especially those big storms that we actually are going to go chase um, with the tours, with Skyscape Photo Tours. When you get that perspective from 35,000 feet, you can see the lightning not just in the area that you're at, like when you're on the ground, but you can see it all throughout the whole storm. And it just is this sparkle. The other thing, though, the northern lights are pretty spectacular um, from from the air as well. It must be incredible. Yeah. Uh, watching it's, pretty, the, it's pretty. It's pretty neat. The northern lights being a, uh, watching a a, a, a big, a big, uh, an incredible storm. Uh, wow. It must be incredible. Yeah. And about luck, because I know a lot of people uh, who has made a trip to Lofoten or to to Iceland. They didn't see any northern light, and when they were coming back on the plane, the northern light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I and I know several people that uh, that uh, told me that. Yeah, uh, when the the year my wife and I got married, I uh, co-led a tour with with my buddy Arl Heitman, and we got amazing aurora every single night, seven nights in a row, clear skies, amazing aurora, and. After that tour ended, my wife flew out to to Lofoten to, to meet me. And then we had our honeymoon in, there yeah. in Norway. And it was cloudy every single night, and she didn't see the aurora once. <laughs> and she was pissed. That's grounds for divorce. Yeah, yeah and because <laughs> everywhere we went, um, you know, we'd be making small talk with, with uh, local people there in Norway. And they would say, "Oh my gosh, did did you uh, see how good the northern lights were? The, you know, last week it was incredible." And my wife is just pissed because she <laughs> hasn't seen it. All she's hearing about is how good the previous week was. Hey, uh, here's a recommendation: don't process those in front of her. You know, he's sitting there in the hotel room, going, "God, look at the <laughs> shot I got four days before he came." Processing away. Yeah. Marital tip for you there, buddy. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know how Candice feels because uh, when I travel to Iceland, and it happens, the it happened the same that this time in Lofoten, the previous week to to my to my trip, uh, incredible northern lights. When I went there, at least I could I could watch them one night, but not to not a strong uh, northern lights, not a strong auroras, and I would like uh, to 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 live uh, a trip. Uh, seven days, all the night, uh, taking pictures of northern of northern lights. It must be something incredible. Yeah, it, it was incredible. But we had guests on the tour. After like five nights of shooting the aurora, they were over it. They're like, "Can we just stay in and sleep? We, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm tired. I, I don't want to go shoot anymore." Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, people it, got fairly jaded. Uh, I don't know if I, if there is any other question. I think there is not. So, guys, for me, it has been a almost a two hours stream. Uh, I I really appreciate your time. Uh, I hope 
you have enjoyed also uh, Ryan and Miles this uh, this stream and also I I hope that people in the chat value that two great landscape photographers like Ryan and Miles have, have joined us today and also with that good vibes and humor between both of them so Ryan and Miles it has been for me a great pleasure and again a great honor to be able to to talk with you today and Jose uh, as always thank you thank you very much for being with all of us today it was it was awesome to be on here again I had so much fun with you guys the first time and uh the first time was a little bit more fun because Miles wasn't around but <laughs> I, I, I was gonna say I really enjoyed speaking to the two of you um the the third one not quite as much i mean i'd rather i substitute this freaking cat for ryan but... <laughs> no gentlemen it's been a privilege i really really enjoyed it thank you so much for for having us on really yeah really the, thank it. you guys jose thank you very much yeah thank you Thank you. So people, right. you know, you know, you have the the discount code for the Ryan Dyer post processing tutorials. If somebody is interested on storm chasing adventures, you know, you have the the website, the skyscaper, photo tours, everything is down below in the video description. So thank you very much. Have a nice, a nice day. Goodbye.